Hey, how's it, Rob? Jay, how's it, man? You good? Ah, I'm sharp, man. <laughs> You're the f one of the few men who gave himself a nickname, and, and people actually <laughs> embraced it. But what inspired that name, Mato Food? I suppose when you're staying in a farm, um, the one real delicacy that you have is uput. Yeah. Uh, it might sound a bit strange to people that live suburban lives. Go to Makaya. Yeah. Uh, and, it, and it was strange because we had also done a nativity play. Um, there was a character, who might Lupu, too. I remember. Lua Mezinho. Yeah, I love you. Lua Wakopi Shage, Lua. Lua, that was that was a Chico project. Oh. Yeah, Lua Mezinho stole the name <laughs> from me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And I say, and I've told Chico this. This yeah. is no secret. Yeah. You know, so he went and made millions of. Why am I copyright angle into the name of Lupu? But that's what I said to him. I was like, how? Can't yeah. And then he tried to deny it. But the the bottom line is that. That character in real life had done an interview on Drum Magazine mm. saying that no, they took the name from hey, Robert Marawa on Soccer Zone because mm. that is where the name was launched. Okay. Um, because everybody else that I had worked with, I'd given them nicknames, mm. you know. So there was Deshi Pagtawa, Ngati Schumban, Ngati Silvestan Daba, Ngati El Prefessori, Ngati Mike Mangena, I revived Usporo. Yeah, was, but yeah. they all tried to give me a nickname, they failed. I was saying, I was saying, I was saying, it's interesting that you mentioned you grew up in the farm. Yeah. But then you went to Hilton College. I mean, I yeah. thought I lend out a I don't think I'm a lepon or a pie. No, nothing is in Jay's Puma and Makala. Tina Sakuma about determine. No, she had about determine. So, exactly what happened. So, you were, you, yeah. you live in the farms, but then you went to it. But I mean, that was not a. Yeah, it was a big jump. Um, uh, the thing that context, you start off a show, a little flower, Roman Catholic school. Uh, you really had to do the hard labor. Uh, there was no luxury, there was no comfort. Um, it was just you up against the, you know, the sisters as we call them, but there were the German nuns that took care of us. Uh, um, so the jump was, even for me, the leap from a little flower to Hilton College was, was massive. Uh, um, it was even less than Gisa said, from the time you left uh, a primary school, only to go learn this in Gisa and Bella High School. Uh, um, it was all, again, due to hard work. Oh. I mean, what we had at Makai, at Fort Lewis, in Kandla, was literally a convenience store oh. uh, that my parents had uh, put together. So, we were young people. We were young people. We were young people. We were young You know, so it was from that bit of money that oh. they made. Oh that they were able to take four kids through to school. So it wasn't uh, just me alone, but they saw four in Ghana, uh, uh, in Ghana. And, uh, you know, when, when we watched that, remember when we went back home for any holidays, four times a year, it was never a holiday for us. <clears throat> it was a time for us to contribute. And it wasn't because we were forced to, but we saw the circumstances because in Makaya, there is no recreational places. It's not like we're going to go, go swing, see or there's a swimming pool, or there's a, there was nothing. It's in Makaya. It's like the old saying, in Komo, Tati in Komo, the city pin, or we are loose the whole day. So the better thing to do was to help. So, Makfigi Kenya, Wasasko Bakeries, you take that bread, you wrap it up, and you put it on the shelves. Or if cardboard boxes come through, and there's no lucky star, no wholesome, and whatever, you are there. Tatum Shinia Maga. Ka, 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 ka. We are fucking Michelle Finn. So we are all part of the, the whole cycle of trying to make the business a success. Uh -huh. Because at the end of the day, it's the same business that is trying to help us get a better life and a better life out of my farm. So you mentioned the business. I mean, your, 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 your father was a businessman. Yeah. And, uh, at what age were you involved in, in the side of the business um, back at the time? You know, I always look back and I say, I wish I was able to tap into his mind a little bit more about the business. So what we did was basically help uh, in the way that we did, from as young as you can be. I mean, when, uh, I was already at boarding school from the age of five, okay. um, which is a bit abnormal uh, when you tell that to a lot of people. Uh, but all it did was that that was my education into life. Uh. 
you know, when you educate yourself and you're being educated, mm. but you're also taking the hard knocks in life. That was my journey. So from the age of five, you're learning to be independent. Oh. You're learning not to rely on parents. You're learning to be, to be neat. You're learning to be punctual. You're learning to be disciplined. You're learning so many different things that in the back of your mind, you're not really aware that you're learning. Mm -hmm. So when you go back home and then you're faced with this long holiday, so what are you going to do in that time? Sure. Because like I said, there's no, there's a lack of stimulation externally. Uh, so the only level of, of excitement is actually being part of the business. So when we're drafting in Dali, uh, and you're putting out those pamphlets, mm -hmm. uh, 12.5, Ibo 7.99, mind you, this is about 4.99, only up until this time, that is what you became a part of. And it became intriguing because you would see the people coming through, yeah. and all of a sudden, that that was a slow business becomes a, a faster business. Mm. You know, the OT, that work in and around are coming through. Uh, we target Amapoisa who are working in the area. So people that have an income, but at the same <coughs> time, it's not just about buying mm. instantaneously and going home because affordability is also limited. Yes. So you find that we create equality. Oh. So we are allowing the people to buy on credit. Okay. Yeah. So Zotenga or cash or look for a square Latin. You know, the, and that's where my mother was very good because she hung on to that book, that black Croxley book. Yeah, okay. Uh. Physically, I have a computer. I have a computer. I have a computer. I have a computer. I have a And also that drew people in because now there was that option uh. of saying, I don't want to waste my entire salary. Yeah. On one grocery shopping, so was looking for 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 so Freyhead was the closest town to where we were. Mm. Um, and, and we would go either to fetch my sister before the Freyhead or just to do again our own personal shopping that we needed, clothes and so on. And I would always see my mother, Ayago NPS. Mm. Um, Ayago was a permanent bank that was there mm. at the time. And Ngimbu Zeg in Jutau. Ma, when Zalan, every time we come live Friday, we are laying down. Let's see. Let's see. I should go to him. Find what we are doing. I go so figure in so glad my linga seko. So in dokfane lui enzi, in fane lo ku shooting. Those are the words. We to shooting enga, but we shooting enga le. We shooting enga, but we shooting enga le. Ngoba, we so figure le lo langa. Let's go to banga ko ni go to enzi. Akseko mali, akseko load. So indirectly. And because there was no finance managers, there was no financial advisors, mm. um, I looked at her as that person who was able to indirectly teach me mm. uh, that money was not for wasting, money was not for usage immediately, mm. but that that money has a potential to dry out. And yeah. when it does, then you tap into those resources mm. uh, that you've been able to use throughout time. So I, I really learned at a young age, the, you know, that you mustn't be phased by life. And mm. luckily, I was also not phased by so-called, you know, designer labels where if a Kogue or LV or whatever, I'm finding like having your Q and I find I've never worn those things. I don't know what they feel like. I don't know if mangi Kogue le will my kneecap twist around the pegging I le I angzas les into the seven range. I'm encouraged by the fact that your mother, you know, at the time, you know. Judging by the way you, you're explaining how she would go to the bank, um, she basically taught you about the principles of saving because clearly, yeah. yeah. so, and, and that's something that would have been cemented in your mind, Guti. Because anything can happen. <laughs> Lo figi kunda ne lo na lo kunda no be to elizo so figi mal mo pumi zinyo ya bo. Yeah. You know, but it goes back. I mean, you mentioned our pants gone bad. It goes back to the piggy bank. Yes. You know, the basic. On in any parent was the piggy bank. With my be konins alele ikon. Example, mo tunyo na ogio tenga ubuya no shinch. 
Besutu funugu bui selang ma utai ibambe le. But funugu bo ano gudle o malo ibamba uzo yisap. Yeah, well then that's where you activate that piggy bank, knowing what to fill it up. And the quicker you fill it up, huh. then the more you stand a chance now of getting to a point where she will then take that piggy bank, will count the money, and then we're going to go open up a bank account for yourself. So now is where we also use Umama again, just on a bank account, even if it's 10 Rand. But yes. the bottom line is that you can brag that you have an account uh, in a financial institution like a bank. Uh, and, and, and that for us was always big. All over the place. Uh, um, and we would utilize them. And we put whatever little cents and coins were there, we put it in because yeah. that was a saving. But South Africans seem to struggle with saving money. I mean, yeah. we have very few role models um, that actually save money in our families. What do you think is the mm. cost? Why people struggle? In my, my, my figure, we just want to make it disappear. <laughs> yeah, evaporate. Yeah, I think these days, when I call it maybe an, an Instagram phenomenon ah. where people are very uh, adept to trying to show a life that they wish they have, but they want to portray that they have it immediately, yes. but it doesn't exist. Mm. You know, um, I think a lot of the times, you know, people that have really worked hard for their money. Mm. Uh, are lesser likely to be showing off about life's finer True. things. True. You know, they would rather enjoy them in the peace and comfort of themselves mm. as opposed to almost like dangling in your face. Which is all well and good. I mean, people would take photos before and by we album, yeah, boy, yeah, boy, page, page. But now, obviously, Instagram has come with a completely different thing. But it's also just come with a desire for people not to enjoy simple life. Huh. I mean, it's like Fanelu Pose. Ugoja has a smile now because yeah. it's always been taken <laughs> photos of. You know, more figuring in the way in the restaurant. Remember, there's a nice arrangement of food. Yes. The first thing you do, as opposed to Utulambil, Utati phone, Uziabosu, Funukshay, is Tomb, so Ugoja. Post on it. Mm. Yeah, so that Babu and Uta, I know, I wing a car, I will use them nuns, I'm a prawns, I'm a langustin, and what, what, what. So it's, uh, I mean, I don't know how that, how far that is sustainable mm. um, moving forward, especially during these tough times. Yeah. I guess that also influences the type of people they are able to attract in your life if you live yeah. that kind of, uh, perhaps, um, to borrow that word, an insta life. Yeah. Oh, okay. And now you are trying to maintain a lifestyle which is not actually real. Yeah. Yes. Um, which takes me to my next point. I mean, apparently your dad was very strict when it comes to money. Absolutely. Very, very strict. Um, he had a very tough upbringing. Very, uh, you know, they struggled. I mean, Ubaba, Umdwasa, Tlekstop, Kulele, Northwest. At Legstop, uh, in a township called the Jubetin, mm. and um, that is where he grew up. It was again a big family, uh, and sure, trying to get by was difficult. But then my dad always had, I think, in him mm. ingrained in him a hustler approach. Mm. Um, he was very adept to learning languages because he spoke very fluent Afrikaans. So that's why when we moved to KZN, and then even in Kanja, so in the surrounding areas, there's all sorts of areas around Belmont and so on. So he was able to, the Afrikaans, and he makes yeah. friends immediately yeah. uh, with the people that are around. So by doing that, he's then able to capitalize on it so that he learns from those farmers there would I yeah you've got fertile land uh. you need this kind of tractor you need this kind of thing to plow that land you need this you need that ah oh, you need a borehole okay we'll come and sort out the borehole so that you can come and irrigate the land and so on well, but obviously there's no um, so by him being able to be linguistically adept to any situation he was able to then draw those people. Yeah. Um, and we ended up, I mean, Beschala Lampana, the most beautiful crops, you know, from Fino to grapes to spinach, obviously, umbilas all over the place. Yeah. Uh, but we worked that land in such a way that there was business that was happening on the one side, and then there was the farming side that was going on. Yeah. There were sheep that were there, 
and everyone said, yeah, we even got involved where we took the, you know, not the electric sheep sharing uh, equipment. Uh, and then we were able to ship that out. And with that, there was also income that was coming in, uh, you know. So th there was always a way and a mechanism and a means, even on a Sunday. I mean, this is like the day of work, uh, but we busy, um, you know, selling chicken. So somebody comes through. But my friends are telling me, okay, okay, and they were going, however many of the person want, these are live chickens that they wanted. Yeah. So it never stopped, you know, the, the so-called business that was running around yeah. uh, was happening literally seven days a week. Wow. There was no full stop to it. We were involved in it. We were a part of it. Uh, and obviously, okay, Subong Echo at the time, we yeah. managed to get a generator. But that was a life that I will never, ever regret because for me, it taught me so much balance, uh, whether from a financial side or even just from a humane side on how to treat people. Yes. You know, so that's why when people come through and they want to portray themselves as being important, hey, Musman for me, that means nothing. Yeah. You know, I, I really don't care, but I, I will care about your humane side. Huh. Who are you? How do we interact? Yeah. Yeah, but and then let's see how life ends up for you. Yeah. yeah. How much influence did your father have on you um, as far as how you handle money? Yeah. And just your general uh, attitude and relationship with money? Yeah, he, he equally was a saver uh, because he had ultimately a dream. Yoguti, from the poor background that he had, He's going to work very hard in this period. And he had set aside a time uh. in 1995, 94, 95, where he said that will be the year that he retires. Okay. So by him retiring means that both he and my mother retire because they were both jointly working in this business. Uh. And his one dream was that he wanted to retire. I uh. somewhere like no uh. You know, because having been born inland in the Northwest and then Usema Farm, uh. you know, but for him, his greatest desire was that wherever he retires must be uh. Uh, somewhere where there's a view to the ocean, the tranquility, and just the acceptance of life uh. um, and the appreciation of Mother Nature. That's uh. what he wanted. Uh. And seeing him work hard towards that dream also indirectly inspired me uh. because um, a lot of people still, till today, in Jawai Dusha now, you don't believe that the upbringing was a farm upbringing, but uh, it was. Uh, um, we just also just needed to quickly adjust and adapt to modern life, um, suburban life, uh, you know, towards the end. But spending for the sake of spending was never a culture in the home. Uh, and like I said, we were never exposed to expensive labels. We don't know. We didn't know what they were. Uh. So we didn't gravitate towards that. Uh. You know, it really didn't matter uh. as long as come Sunday, at least to write. You know, so all of those things for me were important. You didn't realize them then. Yes. You know. Uh, but that value for money, and he was not somebody who wanted to show off. Uh. Um, he who works hard, works hard in appreciation of making sure that his family is taken care of. Uh. He's not working hard to be the man about town. Uh. No, that was never part of his um, uh, part of his mantra. And when I started going into a space where I could earn money, uh. and I mean, I, I remember being at, at the SABC and. Uh, I mean, you're earning like 1,500 rand a month and so on. But I, I knew that within this 1,005. Uh, what, what year was it? Hey, rough, No, I thought you must TV. I know, money is rolling. I know, no, no, no. 1.5. No, no. Ah, 1.5. Yeah. 1.5, 1.5. Yeah. But, you know, because I'd also said, to myself, would you, whenever I start working, whatever the kind of work it's going to be, I don't want to touch that first check. Uh. And that's exactly what I did, uh. you know. And 
Whether they use it or not, I don't know. I saw it a couple of years later, such as La Panabeng I7 Zasang. But for me, it was just the, the, the symbolism of it all to say, all of these things that you taught me, I am now in the beginning stage yes. of earning money uh -huh. as an individual. Uh -huh. uh, so the, you know, the first things that you would do was literally to save. Uh -huh. I mean, there was that Bob T back uh -huh. then. Yeah, well, uh -huh. So if you're able to get a Bob T uh, because you're a teenager and that's what it signified at the time, then all you do is you just kept plowing that money into uh -huh. the savings. And it, it, you know what, it, it, it worked because my first shot at trying to get a property I did not want to rent it. I wanted to buy okay. the property. Mm. Yeah, but we fled in Yeah, well, so after spending some time in Klala Eoville, my sister had an apartment there. Uh, so when she moved out to go to Pretoria, then I moved into that apartment. Uh, so that was still under her name. Um, but then in time, you know, having to move out of Eoville, then one needed to buy something. And I had to, a friend of mine had a very nice, well, I suppose in the time, anything was nice because we right. wanted, hey, there's a bathroom here, there's you know, upstairs in Yan, but it was a nice apartment to eat in Vail. Uh. And, uh, you know, put in an offer, offer was accepted, because they looked obviously at your credit score. Uh. And having been that person who just keeps putting the money into the Bob T account, uh. it stood me well because I was not owing anybody. Yeah. I mean, we're Edgars, we all ran Edgars accounts back in those days. Uh. Um, so even then, I mean, it's not a big spender. I would just go get whatever I need, and it was okay. So you, you found that in the end, I was able to purchase that property. Uh. Um, and since then, I never really looked back because then I knew how to play the property game uh. because you see the value of property as opposed to the value of a vehicle. Uh. Um, and you see how it appreciates, you know? Lord knows, uh. I took a, a heavy knock in 2008. Uh because that is when the stock markets all crashed then. I had just recently bought a property. Um, yo, I mean, it was rough. Uh. In that area within uh, in North Cliff, there was crime all over the place. Uh. I, I did not last five months, and I told the lady that, please put this property back in the market. I'm not going to be able to survive this uh. place. Uh. To July, now people have been killed. There's property, I mean, I even uh, had my property uh, broken into, and that was a sign for me uh. that I, I, I needed to move out. But, yes, yes I mean, I had to pay. Um, I, I probably stopped paying the balance of that house uh, maybe, let's say, four years ago. Uh. You know, well, somebody came and they bought the house when I moved out, okay. but they bought it at such a cheap, cheap rate uh. that. It, yeah, I just wanted to get rid of it. Yeah. But then, unfortunately, the balance of that house had to be paid by me. So okay. I'm still paying for, I was still paying for a property that I was not even having access to. Goodness. I was paying for a property that I was not even living in. Huh. Uh, but I needed to, as per the terms and, uh, and conditions of the, the legal documents, I needed to finish huh. that house. Huh. Um, so those are the hard lessons for me that I learned. Um, also, just the terrain that we were going through as a country to say, we, you know, we're not safe. When you've got plans uh, to say, I want to buy this property long term, uh. want to raise a family in this place that's got a little granny flat, if uh. at some point. Uh. So all of those things you're factoring in. Hey, but hey, the thugs are also factoring in Udai, yeah. uh. and, and that's, you know, those, that was one of my harsher lessons in terms of, uh. you know, the property game but also just the financial gain. But have you continued, though, uh, investing in property, and have you acquired a few more since then? Yeah, so I, uh, renting, you'd rather have someone renting your property so yes. that you, yes. you gain the benefits from that. Mm. Um, and, and that's a beautiful thing because it, it also adds on one day when you retire, you know that you, you've got access to that, mm. and you've got people that are looking after those properties as well. Um, so I'm, I'm happy, I'm glad. It's completely different to what we were introduced to in terms of a retail store. Uh. Uh, now you are getting into a space where you, you're dealing in, uh, I suppose, like anything that happens in the Joburg Stock Exchange, uh. there'll be a loss, there'll be a gain. Yes. You know, just depending on, on, on what's happening financially in, in the world. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm okay in terms of understanding how the property game works, yeah. 
Okay. So the Robert we know today, one day will have to retire. And uh, I think it's encouraging to hear someone who is a fr freelancer like yourself mm. uh, talking about retirement. Because, I mean, you hardly hear that for, from people who are in, in your type yeah. of business. Because yeah. then, um, because I, I guess taking advantage of the fact that you can work uh, even when you're over 65, Post. you can still work. Yeah. But the reality is that your body might not allow. Mm. So um, do you ever put plans in place for that, that day? Because clearly, I mean, there was an influence from your father who was already thinking that way, and he set goals. Yeah. And uh, retirement is certainly something that is in your mind. Yeah, I mean, it is. Um, but we also need to use platforms like yours, and I'm glad that you... Uh, you've got it to also educate people that are in the sector, that are in the space within entertainment, that we are, we are termed independent contractors, right. right? And we pay a hell of a lot of tax. But also at the same time, despite paying the tax, you know, we've also been victims of SARS coming down on us. Yeah. I, you know, I've been a victim of having my entire bank account oh. cleared what? on a Friday. Ganja. Twangya Owish. Huh? I'm serious. Like on a Friday, hmm. I'm going to an ATM to withdraw money, hmm. right? I'm filling up the car hmm. and I'm withdrawing money. So the thing comes. So I tell you, petrol. So I mean, I'm like, yeah. okay. <clears throat> I will, the word insufficient funds, I last saw it as a student. Huh. So as an adult, this was the first time I'm encountering that slip coming back and saying insufficient mm. funds. But I'm like, I'm man. Mm. Uh, and, and it's not the bank that has insufficient funds, it's you. It's me, mm. yeah. Mm. But I had given the bank sufficient funds a couple of days ago. <laughs> but today, mm. it says insufficient funds. So then I, I asked for it to print out, you know, the, the longer version of what's happening in my account. Mm. And, but I see, okay, there was money here. Mm. But it doesn't tell you where it's gone to. So then I had to phone uh, my finance guy and say, but listen, there's just some funny stuff that's happening. I don't understand what it is. Mm -hmm. um, and then he, he asked me, what does the code say where the big sum of money has been taken? Um, and then I tell him. And because he understands these things, he says, no, that is SARS. Mm -hmm. SARS has taken all of your money. And the unfortunate thing is that once SARS has taken your money, there is no way you get it back again. So, but, but how? Because we've complied, we've, we've submitted, the RP five forms have been there. And he said, whatever it is that has happened, there's obviously going to be a judgment, and we're going to have to deal with this thing. But the bottom line is that you can kiss that money goodbye. Uh -huh. And it was gone. And I, oh, I mean, we had to fight big, big battles. And that's why I'm saying that people need to understand that when you are in a space where you're an independent contractor, mm. it's almost half your salary goes to uh, the tax man, mm. you know, uh, because you are, and, and you don't have, again, we don't have access to medical aid, car allowance, mm. housing allowance, all of those things. So from that money that you get mm. as an independent, you have to slice it up in terms of all of those things. And if you've got kids, then that's got to pay for the school fees as well. Mm. Um, sustainable, probably not. And maybe that is why when you hear artists reaching out to the Minister uh, of Sports, Arts and Culture to say, we are in a financial mess, it is COVID, can we have access to funds? Mm. It is because literally, when you get your salary, almost half of it goes to SARS. You're mm. left with the inside as a corner, mm. and you have to see for yourself. Now, if there is the pandemic and you've got no access to working, which means there is nothing that is coming into your bank account, how then are you going to be able to sustain? Mm. And, and then you find people that say, ah, hey, Alomundu, when he was famous, he was, hey, Ubenz, alok, nalok, and now he's dying a pauper. Mm. I think in South Africa, somehow, the system doesn't favor the artistic people. Uh. It doesn't favor people within the industry, you know, simply because um, a lot of what comes in doesn't directly go to them. Yeah. Yeah. So what were the harsh lessons you learned through that um, uh, taxman situation? What did True. you have to do differently going forward? 
I mean, as, as much as you attend to what happens on a daily basis, mm. um, there will always be loopholes. I mean, I have moved now to becoming someone who's working for himself, mm. where um, you, you, you formulate your own company, you work for yourself, and you are direct and independent, uh, but also responsible for other people. I mean, it, it taught me multiple lessons. It's just that I need an expert in the field uh. to take care of the business. Not that I didn't have before, uh. but whatever had happened uh, was, I mean, I can only describe it as being unfortunate because we always kept our eye open in terms of what is happening. Uh. Uh, but for that one moment, you know, SARS found a way uh. to say that this is what you're owing. Um, it, it set me back because you would always listen to different ministers of finance when they present their budget speech and they talk about South Africans not being savers. We are not a saving nation. Uh. And then here you are, you save. But then maybe you're saving wrongly. Maybe you should be saving by acquisition of property, uh. like we were talking about earlier. Because then the minute the people within the revenue service have eye to your account and have eye to money, then they want to take that money. But if you have something else that you've invested in, they don't have immediate access to that. Um, so that was one of the lessons that I learned, was that as much as we get accused of not being a saving nation, when you do, you're opening up your savings to somebody else to come and take. You know, because we all know that the collections within SARS has not been great uh, in the past couple of years. Uh, so you stand alone, you know, and already we who are taxpayers are in the minority in this country. There are billionaires that I know in this country that have not paid a cent in terms of their tax. In fact, they don't even know what tax is. And yet they got private jets, they got big cars, big houses, but they don't pay a cent. So you who forms that part of the middle class, you are the person uh, that is keeping this whole country afloat. Uh. Well, I don't know if it is keeping it afloat, maybe in a pothole, but maybe if they were able to do something more with the money that we're giving, uh, as opposed to it being uh, or landing in corrupt hands, then we'll say, okay, fine. At okay. least we can see the progress of what we're contributing towards. You have, how many children do you have? How many? Children. Kids. Hmm. I've got one. Okay. Yeah. So um, how are you going to make sure that even when you're not around, yeah. <clears throat> that your child is taken care of? Because unfortunately they can't uh, you know, step into your shoes and no. start uh, presenting as a Namingo <laughs> to junior. Um, you know, so um, I guess it will require some kind of plan to make sure that there is some kind of cover yeah. um, to make sure that uh, your child is, how are you ensuring yeah. uh, that there is that peace of mind and protection and to ensure with this yeah. continuity, even if you are not around. Yeah, so with, with, with the financial institution that I'm in, the nice thing is that they, they give you a personalized approach in terms of what you need to do with the new portfolio. And uh, the, education, um, the education savings portfolio is one of the most important ones because he's only 11 years old, he's still at primary school, and he's still got high school, and must pay my school fees as a high school. Umanu, hey, Umanu, Shobanel, and now is okay because it's like, wow, where did we get to this amount? You know, um, you know, certain schools are over half a million rand a year. Um, so how is that possible? <laughs> but it is what we face. So luckily, they have those uh, facilities for you uh, to then uh, put an amount of money towards him and his education, and it's solely for that. Uh -huh. And then it provides again for me to open a bank account uh -huh. for him. Uh -huh. You know, he obviously doesn't know this, but he will, uh -huh. you know, eventually when the time is right, to expose him to the fact that here's a bank account, here is how it works. And uh, you also then try and teach him the disciplines that I was taught. Um, you know, so I'm quite, I'm, I'm quite okay in understanding that for, for me, for him, it's about health cover. Uh. And that's the first thing that I did when he was born was really to put him in the same medical cover as me. Uh. Um, 
And so he's got access to that in case anything happens. Uh, but also, second to the medical aid is education. Yes. Yeah, because that is the one driver, really, that I think, uh, given our hard financial times, that will sustain anybody is to be a trained practitioner in whatever field of choice that right. the person has. And once he's decided what to pursue, then it, you know, at least he'll be able to tap into some funds uh, that will see him through a, a, a good quality of education. Yeah, you know, one of the underrated uh, uh, policy, if I may call it mm. that, is, is a life cover, yeah. you know, so um, which a lot of people take for granted because especially at Bantu Bamiyam, we tend to focus on mm. the funeral cover, but then there's a life cover, you know, which is a, a much bigger lump sum to yeah. make sure we take. Uh, life continues um, mm. w when you're not around. So, but I mean, it's encouraging to see that yeah. these are some of the things that uh, generally you you look at uh, in yeah. your life. But I think as we, as we conclude, <clears throat> COVID happened. <laughs> How did you survive? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I know when I when I saw you earlier, and I said, you know what, we we survive somehow, um, and one's got to be very grateful because. I mean, I live every day having to take blood thinners because of the two heart attacks that I've had. Yeah. Um, and even that was a miracle oh. because I know of a Chester Williams who had a heart attack once and we don't have Chester Williams today in the country. Oh. I know of an Eddie Zondi who had a heart attack, he had a heart attack once and is gone. I know of a Vuyambuli who had a heart attack and he had it once and is gone. Oh. I know of a Mark Vivian Foe who played for Cameroon on the field, he had a heart attack once and is gone. Huh. You know, I can go on and on and on. There's a, a, a plethora of people that have had what I have, but I managed on two occasions to survive that. Huh. Yo, then COVID happened. Um, and remember then, I was flatly unemployed. Huh. You know, people like us who have a hobby of being fired at institutions, um, you know, fired at Supersport in 2019, and then, uh, you know, July uh, 2021 at SABC, given the same treatment. Mm. Um, so you find yourself, for the first time in, in your entire life or entire career, mm. you've worked in, and you've got nowhere to go. Mm. You know, and you're thinking, hmm. In fact, I do, do remember, I I do remember that time, just before COVID, we yeah. were discussing. Uh, uh, ideas, ideas, and yeah. to do something, and then boom, yeah. and then everything flattened out afterwards. Yeah, yeah. So it was, um, it it was a tough time because here you are for the first time. You're not involved mm -hmm. in anything. I mean, broadcasting is my passion, and when you've been sidelined, you know, by forces to be not involved in what you really like to do, then obviously the the bank is also saying, hey man. When the I land, I'm not to call for anymore. <laughs> you know? yeah. um, but I used that time very effectively for myself. Uh -huh. Because remember, I told you, five years old, I'm at boarding school already. Uh -huh. So I'm away from home. Then I decided, as in Obabu Session in 2016, uh -huh. let me take this time, let me go home to KZN and spend time. And a good two or so months, uh -huh. I was at home for the very first time uh -huh. in my life. Um, and it was such a great bonding session for us uh, that I did not even think twice. Then the one day I'm getting hot and cold flashes, I'm hearing about this COVID, mm. hot and cold flashes, but I knew that night, oh. I knew that this thing had entered into my system. Um, the phone, the, a doctor friend of mine who stays in the UK, Dr. Sangwa, and, and he was now considering the fact that I'm a cardiovascular risk mm. as well. So not just about COVID, but mm. there's the heart element that comes into it. Uh, so he said to me, as in, whatever, wherever you are, and I was in KZN then, and he's like, pack your bags, go to the hospital mm. right now. So I was admitted immediately into oxygen, um, and I was fine. I was, I was okay, but I knew which things are happening that are, are not all right. Mm. But instead of it getting better, it got worse. Uh. So after about four days, then I was taken into ICU. So ICU, I spent eight days. Um, so it was back to familiar territory. ICU, I've had in 2008, and uh. 2017, and 2018. So here I am now with COVID, back in a similar situation. Uh. 
Uh, it was like deja vu. But I think the most scariest part is, uh, I know the, you know the people watching can't see, but the clarity of the glass offices that are there, that is how open ICU is. I'm here in my little room, but I can see what's happening directly across. And you'd see people coming in, and then in the morning, they're fanning it, getting ready. Or sometimes you wake up in the middle of the night, there's a body bag taking somebody out, and you can see, you know, but you, you're hoping, you're praying, you're believing, you're trying to be strong, you're trying to use you know, breathing techniques that you've never thought of before, huh. uh, but you wire it up, you know, so you can't exactly lie in your tummy, uh, you know, because all of these gadgets are, uh, are in you, you know, but, you know, thank the man above. Uh, one survived, uh, went back into a normal ward, and, uh, <clears throat> yeah, so it was about 14 to 16 days where I was in the hospital. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, and I remember that it was a tough time, and in fact, I do recall uh, sending you an SMS. Uh, yeah. Uh, in one of those days, yeah. There were so many. I, me and my phone are not friends no, at you, all. You did respond. You did, <laughs> did respond. I? Yeah, you did yeah. respond. Yeah. I know I made enemies there, be, yeah. not because I wanted to, but there yeah. was just no time. I think the focus was on will you survive? Yeah. Yeah. Final word from you to your peers in your industry mm. who may not or may or may not have taken the issues of managing finances and thinking long term. Um, you know, not, not ready for any economic shock. Yeah. Uh, what would you say to them based on your lessons learned and including your deal having gone yeah. through uh, mm. some health uh, challenges? Mm. I mean, what would you say to them? Yeah, I think my advice would be think logically. Don't think in terms of fantasy. Fantasy does not work in reality. Mm. So think logically. Think of where you are. Think of where he or she is. By he or she, I'm talking about your son and your daughter. Mm. When you finish wearing all of these wearable labels, how does that benefit the kids that you're leaving behind? So once you've thought logically, think of how then they would be able to have access to that money that you're going to leave for them. And will it be enough? Mm. Have you driven yourself hard enough for them to be able to survive. You brought them into this world. They didn't ask to be here. So the logic comes in by not being selfish. Right. You know, so my lesson that I even learned being unemployed was that, okay, have I been spending a lot in jail? And the answer was no. So I could be able to still take care of myself, pay the school fees, be able to, you know, take care of home with my engine um, because of the lessons that they had taught me. You know, that of saving, that of not just spending. Um, and I know that, yes, we are broadcasters, but we deal a lot with football players as well. Okay. And I do urge them, uh, because the clubs don't give any financial literacy, is to take it upon yourself that if you've come from nowhere and you find yourself with now 50,000, 80,000 rand a month, trust me, the tavern is not the place to go okay. at all. Other clubs elsewhere in the world, what they do is that already they take, let's say, 10% of your salary and they put it into a fund so that by the time you retire, you have access to that. Anil Nguangla was an example of that. Um, so he, when, when he finished playing in Belgium, he was able to come back home, play for Sundowns, but then they still locked that money there. And he even spoke about it. He said, even now, he has access to 22 million rand. Hmm. You know, why? Because they took that money automatically from a salary and they put it aside. Hmm. As a football player, hmm. what exactly are you paying for? Because everything gets taken care of. Your hmm. flight, you're flying to play an away game, you're not paying. The hotel that you go to, you're not paying for that. Uh, the bus that you're using, you're not paying. Hmm. The hotel, the food, everything, it's being paid for. So you're literally just paying for the day-to-day -day clothes. Mm. So be wise enough, as especially the football players, to take that money, the gazillions of it, not to add big rims and big mm. sound systems in the car, 
you will still, it, Michael Jackson will still sound the same, regardless of whatever system you have. Oh, Arkel. Oh, Arkel. Hey, yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you're reminding us of his Jeep. Um, so at, at the end of the day, it, you know, and, and I plead, and I say this a lot to the football players, is that it looks like it's going to be a long career, mm. but it isn't. Mm. And rather save as opposed to spend. I think this is the side maybe of uh, Robert Marawa that a lot of people don't know. And uh, thank you for, thank you for uh, sharing with us. And, uh, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of people will learn from mm. some of the harsh lessons you've learned. But also, Jay, just with naive chronic. And, um, you know, I always say, that's why I'm out here, bank. I'm a TV screen, I'm always on mute. Mm. Because they know what I would turn them to. Yes. So you need to a bit sad. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, trust we'll, we'll chat again soon. Absolutely. Thank you very much for the opportunity to be here and add my two cents. Yeah.